Welcome, welcome to another video from the Gentleman's Picks Club, but that's not important. What is important is what we're doing today. This is the fantastic ZX Touch that I paid for for my own money, and we're going to be looking at firmware version 1.11. I'm going to take you through all the new exciting features of it, all the new things that are worth your attention, and this video will be very heavily chaptered, so you can jump about onto all the different parts that you see as you choose fit. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in and more importantly thank you to the developers for allowing me to do this for you currently as you can see we are on version 110 of the firmware and we want to upgrade to 111 there's a slight difference if you've looked at the 110 video on doing the factory upgrade because this time we need to reset the factory settings there's been a lot of changes on the zx touch and this is to ensure that all new settings will take correctly So we basically say OK on that screen if you happen to be on that screen. And where we do is we go to save load and there's a home icon here. You may not notice, but if you touch the home icon, do you want to load factory ZXT configuration? Our answer is going to be yes. And you can see that we've done this because we have the keyboard buttons there and there on the left and right hand side. And that tells you that we are back in factory reset mode. We are back in a brand new ZX touch mode. So to upgrade the firmware, you copy the file onto your um, SD card that you have loaded in already. And we've got our SD card loaded in just down there and we're ready to go. You power off your device and you hold down all the buttons and you power it on again. And it lies, it says firmware, not an SD card. It did that before as well. There's nothing we can do about this. Ignore all my de directories for the moment. The only thing you care about is this here. This is version 111 of the firmware, but an early version. So you will see a slightly different number to what I've got here. I click on that and it's a test version. And we basically say upgrade, always ensure your battery is at full health. You don't want this failing on the upgrade. And this is the first time I've done it. We hit that button, and are we sure? Yes, we are sure. And that is validating it, it's now erasing it, so we are at the point of no return. If anything breaks at this stage, you know, it is literally game over, and I'll be doing a support call to see how I can get this repaired, but I'm sure everything is gonna be fine. We have to wait for this, but I'm letting it play through, so you see effectively how long it takes. You get an idea of the full end-to-end -end process on what you have. We're nearly there you know, 50% are raising and then writing it. If I recall from when I did 110, is actually very, very quick. This firmware offers a lot of neat features, a lot of new things. You know, I knew a couple of things that were coming, but when I saw the release notes, I was kind of blown away by the amount of stuff that they actually had on this. So I'm gonna take you on a journey through this video while this is a raising, well, after this is a raise, to show you all the new features, all the new things that you can expect this great device to be doing. So it's programming it now. This is basically writing the stuff over the top of the erased flash that we've got and it should come to an end in just a moment's time. And there you go, upgrade finished success successfully. So we say okay to that, exit there. You're going to exit firmware up to upgrade tool. Are you sure? Yes, we are. And we're back there. I'm going to power off the device. And we're going to power on the device. And hopefully, hopefully, we have the latest firmware. So we're going to click on here. We are going to go to miscellaneous and we're going to look at the information there. And that is 110T5. And you can see all the people that have been involved in this. This is absolutely fabulous. And Elmar Electronics, you know, this came out a year ago and or almost a year ago at Crash uh live 2023 and to still see it being updated it was great when it first came out it got better with version 110 of the firmware and here we are now with basically more features more features than you can take a stick at all these features will be bookmarked and chaptered in the video so you can jump along as you want but no we now need to get on a journey on exploring and playing with this latest version v110 not 110t5 The first thing we're going to be looking at is title screens. On this device, you can set a custom title screen. Let me show you how. 
we are going to power it on and you will see the default there of a young lad holding the zx touch and we want to change that picture so what you do is you go to options here you go to display and title screen you type set or press set rather and you get this little message here we say yes to this and it will basically um, write from the SD card into the memory of the device it says finished we say okay you can notice title screen is set to custom there so we go back we go to save load and we go to save defaults and are you sure you want to save the default configuration yes we are so we press yes and then we power this off now the custom screen will be in the memory of the device so we can take the SD card out there we go and the SD card is on the side now and we can power it back on and there we go Clive Sinclair the glorious man himself is there to welcome us as we boot up this device and that's a really nice feature you can put anything you want there you know what I would be doing with this if you're like me and you carry this around because I do play with this I do take this with me I would actually be putting my name and my address on the title screen that you've got there so if it did get stolen from me if it did get stolen you know what it's a great way to have a one in a million chance it actually ends up in the hands of someone nice that will want to return it to you The Spectrum had a lot of adventure games for it, and you know one of the people that produced a lot of good ones was Melbourne House. I've got a couple of games of their system on here, but quite frankly, if you go into The Hobbit and we start this, and the game loads in, we press this button to use the keyboard. You know it is a bit of a pain in the neck to use. It's not so easy to use. You know everything is really small. So you know we're going to do um, open door. don't even get that right we're going to do open door there we go d-o-o-r and hit return and that is not that easy to use now what we can do is we can make some changes to this device so if we go back to configuration here we go to display we go all the way down to text adventure programming keyboard and we turn that on and then we go back here and we are going to go back to the game through here and we're going to start that game look at this we have a much better keyboard to actually be using here so now we can hit return to start the game and actually got to hit return a couple of times there and o p e n space d o o r hit enter and that is perfect that is really really very good you know you can program on here you can do all kinds of different things so the keyboard upgrade the keyboard upgrade is an absolute pleasure to see on here there's another button that might be of interest to some of you as well and this button here expands the size of the screen so it, it breaks the perspective just a little bit on what you're doing but for text adventure games this is going to be absolutely ideal you know think of the original um level nine games that you had which were text only to be able to see everything in terms of you know all the text on the screen at once with this kind of i, I, I suppose it, it is expand what that button is called everything suddenly becomes a whole lot more clearer and this is a great update to have if you're like me that used to like the adventure games but on here have not really played that many because i have fat fingers and it makes it just a little hard to do and now everything is easy and without my gloves of screen protection on because you know what the amount of fingerprints that transfer onto the screen you know you're in a world where actually 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 this makes things a lot lot easier this is not a feature of the firmware but it's a life hack that i'm going to throw in into this particular video here i love my zx touch a hell of a lot but the screen the screen gets very very dirty as do all screens from the transfer of grease and oil from your fingers we cannot all be wearing perfect gloves like this every time we use this we look rather silly and we would look like we're michael jackson as well which you may or may not want to be doing but no what i've done on here is i've put a screen protector on here and the uh the deck that you can get from uh, valve the stream deck i believe it's called you know that screen protector is exactly the right size to fit perfectly on here so those are available on amazon as well very very cheap and worth getting
The next area we're talking about is side sections. Side sections are basically these two panels that you see here, one here and one here. They're great for navigating as you move around your collection, the setup and everything that you've got here, but you may find yourself not wanting to have them when the game is on and they will always be there. Well, now there's been an option to actually change this. If you go to settings here, you go to display and you scroll down and you go to hide side sections, we're gonna turn that on. And we're going to go back, we're going to go back, and we're going to pick a game. We're going to pick Jetpack here, and we're going to do Start. And the side sections are there. Well, because I haven't got this set to automatic, I've got to manually do it. And it's a two-finger uh, combination that you do. If you hit it with two fingers there, you can see they disappear. We can play the game. And you're in a world where basically everything, you know, is now full screen. So the immersion is fully there. If you want to bring back the panel... You just touch this and it appears here. It pauses the game. The panel has reappeared. And to start the game, you can hit play and it will carry on with our Jetman reappearing there. There is another option in all of this. If we go back to the menu here, we go to display. We go to hide side sections and we do auto. And then we go back to our folder here. We are going to pick another game, I think. And we'll go say here. And what shall we do? We will do... What can we do? There's so many choices. We'll do this version of Manic Miner here. We do a Manic Miner there, and we do Start, and it loads in automatically. This is a ULA version of Manic Miner that basically is a Shamrock edition here that, you know, is quite pretty where, you know, it's like a torchlight that you've got, an Irish torchlight being Sam, uh, Shamrock, where you've got to jump around and do things a little bit differently. But, yeah, no, this works. This works absolutely fine until I died. So those are the side buttons. Again, if I want to bring it back, I touch the screen and it appears. The game is paused and you can see everything is paused at that point. And then we can restart if we choose. You can now customize dashboards even more. Originally, when the ZX Touch came out, we had the game browser that booted up automatically. These games might be slightly different from the original firmware that was on there. These are the version 1 and 110 games. But essentially, you went into this area here and you could basically pick what game you wanted to play. They had this icon here, external storage, where you could go and you could pick your own games that you wanted. But, you know, it was all a little bit clunky. On version 110 of the software, tabs were added. So you could put whatever games you wanted under whatever tab you wanted. You know, your choice. It was your choice to customize this how you wanted to do. And that worked very well. But under version 111 of the firmware, there's been a few more enhancements. Let's be honest. People are going to want to customize this device, you know, to their own personal requirements. And they may not like all the games that are on here. Well, what you can do now is you can actually hide the original default games this comes with. If you go to settings and you go to display and you do hide main dashboard and then you go back, you go to save load. Always save your settings, save defaults, say yes to this, go back. We are going to then power off the device. You actually don't need to power it off, but I want to do this for full effect on what you actually see. When we power on the device, Clive appears. Hello, Clive. Thank you for showing. And then we are immediately into one of our user-generated tabs that we've got. So all of this looks rather nice. All of this looks rather good. Now, what we've also got is a couple of more customizations you can do. So we are going to pick Automator for this one automator let's pretend that we have filled this up and we've got all the automated games that are available here including new wheels john do you know new wheels john took me a long long time to get and i'm so pleased to have the original there but anyway we don't want to add any more but we've got this icon here we don't want to see that icon if we hold down in an empty space we can scroll here keep going and hide first icon that icon is now gone so you know we can go to this dashboard here we've got the icon there this is actually my random dashboard where i've got unsorted stuff things that don't have enough titles to have their own page for one of a better word here but no the automator one is gone and then it's back there so you know if we go a little bit over here and we've got uh an ultimate one somewhere where are you there you are all right we basically click on there and we can do hide first icon Boom, that is gone as well. So we've got our ultimate play the game titles there. I think there's still two or three more to add here. So we're going to put that back. 
and we are going to do show first icon and it appears back so you can customize all of this a little bit but for the um automator one you know we're not going to add the first icon but we want to do a little bit more we want to know what company produces all these great games yes i've told you but if you click on here and we do name we can type in a u t o m a t a space uk that's not uk uk and then we do enter and look automator uk has appeared right at the top here so now now we have all kinds of customization that we can do on here and this is starting to get very very exciting on how you can set this up to your own requirements Running a YouTube gaming channel, one of the things that we actually do is we don't cheat on games. The Gentleman's Specs Club never cheats, we never do infinite lives or anything like that. But back in the day, on the Sinclair Spectrum, some of the games were so brutal that you had to do this. Well, the ZX Touch had one failing. It never allowed you to use poke files. No, you couldn't use them and you were in a position where you were kind of stuck a little bit in terms of infinite lives, bits and pieces like that. Well, now in version 1.1.1 of the firmware, you can do this, let me demonstrate. If you go to your SD card here, and you see JSW poke and JSW tape there, um, these files are what I've actually copied on here, and you need the poke file to be the same name before the period as the tape file, so JSW, JSW, and as long as the file extensions are poke and tape, um, they will work together. You need to make one change on your system. You basically go to preferences, miscellaneous, auto load poke files, say yes to that, Go back, go to your tape, do save defaults, and say yes to that. And that should save everything that you want. Back on the SD card, we are going to hold down JSW tape, and it's going to load in, and it will load in quite normally. There will be no code here, because this version comes from a compilation that didn't need a code. Um, but yeah, we're going to start the game. So you can see you've got an enemy at the top there. We are going to go into the next room just to prove the enemies are there as well. This is quite important for this particular demo. And you can see the enemies there. We're going to leave that room. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to miscellaneous. And we're going to open the poke memory tool. And here we go. We have these pokes that we can do. Many, many pokes that we can do. Well, we are going to do no enemies. Because that's quite important here. And we are going to do. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Jump up some walls. And do apply. And we get a little message that two pokes have been applied. We say OK to that. We go here, we go here, we go here, and we're back in the game. You can still see an enemy there. The poke files can be downloaded from the internet. That enemy is still there because this screen rendered before the, the pokes were applied. But if we go into top landing, they're gone. If we go to the bathroom, they are gone. And we did the little poke so we could jump up a wall. So let me try and demonstrate that. Look, we go all the way up the wall, but we fall to our death. We don't like that. If we go back into settings, we go back to miscellaneous, we open the poke memory tool, and there was a no death from full. We do apply there, say okay that, back, 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 and then we're gonna do the same stunt again. There you go, we survived that, we survived that. So you can basically do what you want from game files. You know, you can modify the game as you choose, as the game is live, as you play, as long as you've got the right game files, which is the poke file. And this I consider to be an absolute fantastic addition that we have to the system. We have recently demonstrated how the pokes work, but look at this, the game browser, we don't have Jet Set Willy anymore because I have deliberately removed this and we're going to go to the storage card and we're going to create a new ZTG file because there's been some changes so we hold on this and we do add to library and I've already got preloaded the graphics for this you know this was the T file and the I file for the info image let's not worry about anything else for the moment apart from the poke file so computer is 48k info image is there we confirm we want that one so it's going to use both of those we want the poke file there and it brings it up jsw poke that's exactly the same as well and we're just going to do finish and it will say okay to that we do okay to that now um when we fire this up it will load in 
we do enter to start we go to settings we go to miscellaneous and we open the poke file and the poke file is there so let's do something else a little bit different so uh let's what shall we do what shall we do we only need to collect one item to enter the bedroom do apply for that say okay to that there are so many choices on what we could do so we grab that we go all the way here And we head towards the bedroom. Hopefully, hopefully, this is going to work. Oh. There we go. Fell down the room a little bit. But it doesn't matter. So, hopefully, Maria won't be there if this poke has worked on this version. There, she's gone. So, we go all the way to the bed. I get to jump. Oh, there you go. And he goes running back. And if you've never seen the end of Jet Set Willy, spoilers ahead, fast forward the video about 10 seconds and you won't see it. But in a moment's time, this is the end game. This is what it was all about. He then pukes his head in the toilet because he has drunk too much and done too much work. So that shows you pokes working on the fly and also um, you know, pokes on a ZTG file. So you have it all included um, within the file that you want. In order to add games to the game browser, you need the games in a certain directory. Let me demonstrate. So if we go to external storage here, we go to ZXT system and we go to library, all the ZTG files that we have are in this particular folder. And then we can actually add them to the library by basically going to a screen that allows modifications, holding this down, add game, and we can pick from that list. That games library is that folder we have shown you on the system. Historically, you needed to copy things around, and the one problem that the ZX Touch had in days of old was all the work you needed to do on the SD card was on the computer. You had to take the SD card out of the system, put it in your computer, do the work. Well, things have changed, and there's a few modifications to show you, and I'm only going to just touch on this, but it's important to show them. So if we go to external storage here, and we scroll all the way down. Um, we've got this file here, JSW. We want to put that in another folder. But we also see this temp folder that has been used. So we click in, click in there. We don't particularly like that. We're going to hold that down. And then we can delete. So there you go. We slide that across and say, yes, we have a file manager now on your SD card. Um, this poke file we don't need because we've demonstrated this. So we're going to hold that down. And we're going to do delete. Get rid of that. The tape file we don't need. We're going to hold that down and we are going to do delete and get rid of that. Boom, you see, everything goes, everything goes. But this file we do need. So we're going to take that file and we're going to do cut. We're going to go into the system. We're going to go into the library. We're going to hold it down and we are going to do paste. And if we scroll down, we will have uh, JSW. Uh, dot ztg and that will be there and that should work absolutely fine now what we want to do is we also want to add it to our dashboard i've previously um gone away off camera and edited this screen and jet set willy is in there so we're going to hold that down add game and we're going to scroll down find jet set willy say okay to that and jet set willy is there so you know we also want to move uh we want to move to there so there we go and that's in its rightful place we then fire up the game say start and it loads in and you've seen us just delete the poke file if we go to settings here actually that's keyboard and um, we go to settings here we go to miscellaneous we open the poke file this is now saved within the ZTG file. So let's do something a little bit different here. There was a starting room. Here we go. Starting room 1 to 63. And we will start in room 8. Enter. Apply. Okay, say okay to that. Go here, go here, go here. And then we just start. There you go. We're in the mega tree. We started in the mega tree and fell to the foot of the mega tree. So that was demonstrating how to move files around effectively in the, the, the well, let's go back to it let's go back to it uh oh, I've, I've lost my bearings i've lost my bearings hang on a minute there we go let's go reset cancel 
there we go that's how you do it you see so many things to click on this is so feature rich now that i get lost finding my way around it but yeah we've now got a file manager to manage our way around this file system and that also demonstrated that the pokes do save with the ztg file and everything loads in happily on its own As humans, we are all different. Some of us may be colorblind, some of us may hate some colors. And on the ZX Spectrum, you were limited to the color palette you had. Yes, it's got ULA mode, but you know what? There's a few challenges on some games where you may not like the color of the sprites that have been used. Well now, thanks to the ZX Touch, you can change that. Let me explain. We're gonna fire up Load Runner. That's gonna have some annoying background noise that you have to listen to. So this music is part of the 128K version here. We're gonna cycle through here. And you can see the red platforms, white ladders, black background. All that is working rather well. Well, let's pretend we don't like how that looks. I've got a demo of something rather spectacular here. So if we go into the load runner here, it's going to fire up and the colors look a little bit different. We're going to start the game by pressing this button a few times. And you'll notice that not all the colors are there. Well, they are there. They have just been changed a little bit for a very, very special reason. Now, the Eagle Eye of you will have noticed that we've got B00 off there. We'll explain what that is in a moment. But also, there's something new that's been added to this game. This button has been redefined as a function button. Let me show you. If we go to settings here, we go to physical keys here, you can see FN. That is a function button that has a couple of special features that are tied into this screen here. You've got volume up that's here. You've got volume down that's here. You've got background left and background right, which are these two buttons that are shown here. And all of these, these secondary functions are available if you have a function button that you set up. So all I did was I clicked on there, uh, clicked on delete when it was a different button, and I put function in there. Oh, here we go, put function in there. And there it was, so you have your function button. Now, if we go back to the game, that we've got here. I am going to hold the function button down and I want you to look at this part of the screen here, the top left hand side. We can push up, we can push down and we can change and we can alter the music but we can also push left and right. So if I push right, boom, we have a new background. We have taken a load runner and we have made it into something rather spectacular in my eyes and a little bit different looking. This is now a forest version of Load Runner. So we can play the game as normal by basically right, grabbing that, uh, doing a little, sorry, facing that way, doing a little dig, doing a little dig there. And the game plays as normal, exactly as you would expect. And this is one of the features, and it, you, you get this annoying sound when you die on the 128K version. This is one of the features now of version 111 of a firmware. You can modify the colors and put your own backgrounds into the game. Let me show you how this works. If we go into settings here, we go to display. And colors is very similar to ULA mode. ULA mode is turned off at the moment because obviously if we have that on, um, that will do something a little bit different. But we can now edit the palette and all these colors we can change. So for instance, you know, we have black ladders. If we don't want black ladders anymore and we want yellow ladders, let's say, let's click on here and change these sliders till we can make a yellowy color if I can remember my red, green, blue. There you go. So that's yellow. We will now go back, go back, go back, and the ladders are yellow. Now, if you like the settings and you get this set up how you want it, all you do is you go into settings and you do save load, and you basically save current game settings. Do you want to save the ZXT configuration for this game? We say yes to that. And basically, we now have a different setup needed here. But the backgrounds, you can add 100 backgrounds to your system where you hold the function key and you basically push left and right. I can turn it off. I can turn it on there. And even, hey, that looks a lot better, I think, with this color scheme that we've currently got than the original Load Runner. So if you've got problems with your eyes, and even if you don't have a background that we can turn on or off, you can make things look much more pleasing. The background setup is detailed in the instructions that come with this firmware, but essentially, very briefly, you need to create a JPEG file that is a, a baseline one, and there's a certain resolution you need to create this with, and when you've created that, you can include it in the ZXG file. And let me show you a little bit more. So if we click on here, 
and this is our load runner game the zxt sorry the ztg file you can now edit so we are going to hold this down and we're going to choose edit and you've got all these options that you may remember from before but now you've got backgrounds so if i turn off backgrounds um, for keep existing and we have them uh, external and we just say finish here for the moment we say okay um, we're then going to edit this again so we're going to hold it back down and we're going to choose edit and now i want to add backgrounds it picks up this file that i've basically got saved on the sd card which is a 512 by 384 file b00 underscore the name of the game remember with the pokes how it had to be the same name as the tape file you were loading in exactly the same lr128k and we just say confirm and then we do finish and it saves the file with our background we've got all these files that you can see here we'll explain the jetpack ones in a moment that you can see but we have a file editor where we can actually view files and you think well how would you do this if you look at the top on the game browser you've got these filters here and you can scroll left and right if i say all for all of this and scroll down i've got a lot more files that i can see now for instance the uh, jetpack no tape one uh, that's basically the tape file that we've got here the jetpack demo text these are the instructions so if i hold that down we can now see a text view of the instructions that we have that you can now include on the zt sorry on the ztg file so if i edit the ztg file for jetpack on demo and i go edit there and info text if i click on that that now appears so the the file that you saw the text file that you saw is now going to be included and if i do finish there that will save it and we can go back but that was done for a specific reason because we want to copy we want to copy this a little bit so where is it where is it where is it can't see where it's gone now um literally i can't i can't see the wood for the trees there we go found it so if i hold on that and this now allows us to also manage the sd card from the zx touch which you couldn't do before if i do copy there that will take that file and i'm going to go into zx system i'm going to go into library and i'm going to paste that file there and it overwrites it so now if i go here so I go here go back go back go back we're going to go all the way to the end and i have basically put that file there i hope i've put that file there already you click on it is that the right one no it's not we're going to do here we're going to do add game and we'll do jetpack demo and that's the one we click on that and we can now click on story and lo and behold lo and behold you can see the inlay instructions there so you can now modify these dashboards a little bit further than what you wanted to do Let's talk piracy. Ultimate Play the Game and a few other companies like Codemasters do not allow distribution of their games. That's a big firm no. You cannot do this. Well, there is a way around this now. We can create these files here and you've got the game that will run if you click on start. And that works for me, but that won't work for everybody else because I can't give this out. And that's a bit of a shame when you go to all the effort of creating these dashboards. We've got multiple people doing the same thing. Well, thanks to firmware V111, we can now share these dashboards and allow others to modify them if they want to for their own needs. Let me explain. So on this screen, you can see two versions of Jetpack. We've got this version here that I've just fired up and we've got this version here. I'm going to load this version and it looks exactly the same. I'm going to click on start and it basically says the game code is missing. The game code is missing here. So if I go to this button here, I hit cancel there and I fire it up again. The game code is still missing. So it's absolutely clear that this particular one on this side that you see me launch twice has a problem. Well, if we go to our SD card now, and we go into ZXT system and then we go into library and scroll down a little bit. What you'll notice is for this demo that I've set up, we've got Jetpack, no tape ZTG. We'll hit that one. 
and it fires up the game file is missing. So that is the ZTG file that you were seeing on that dashboard there, and it does not work because it does not have the tape file. Now, if we hold this down and we do edit, see here, include the tape file from the ZTG file. We now are going to tick that and we're going to do finish and it resaves. So what it's essentially done is jetpack underscore no tape dot ztg it has exactly the same name for with the correct tape file that you need we are now going to go back to the dashboard to show there's no magic going on here um and we remember that one didn't work we're going to hit the button again do start and now because the tape file has been included it's absolutely great we can now share these files so we don't have to include the wrong file now let's assume that we've created a game ourselves. let's go back a little bit here and we're going to go and pick uh, one of the ultimate play the game so i think for this keep going keep going here we go alienate fire that up do start that works you can see that working here well we are now going to go to the menu do cancel go back here and we're going to a zxt system we're going to go to library and i will break my file just to demonstrate this for you we will hold that down and we will edit that file there and we are going to not include that file name and we're going to click on that box to ensure the file name is external so that file is now no longer included when we do finish it saves that we say okay we go back a couple of times and we fire up alienate to start and the game code is missing so what this means is i have removed that alienate.tape file from the ztg file that you've got here and i can now distribute and share this on my others so thanks to this new firmware you have an option where if you've created lots of dashboards for games that you like that you can't distribute because they've got the tape files embedded in them you are now in a position to be able to do this and avoid any copyright issues so ultimately there may be a site in the future that is an archive of ztg files of all kinds of different games and all you've got to do is add your own tape file you know it is not limited to ultimate play the game you've got code masters um i think you've got zenobi software as well and all these people don't like things to be shared you could for instance buy something off uh, let's go all the way back here you could buy something off um itch.io um you know, let's find a game here uh, one of the paid games here we go so mutant mushrooms i think was a paid game you know that game there i could give you the entire cover and everything like that without needing to give you the game by removing the the required tape file so no that is a fantastic addition that we've got added on here that's going to make sharing distributing all these covers all these screens that you can see a lot easier going forward do you ever wish that you could control time this is time this is 2027 now video games can be very hard and timing is absolutely perfect there's another feature in this firmware i would like to share with you if we go to death chase and we do start and this is a very very painful game to play because things can go wrong so quickly we're going fast we're accelerating we're driving and i'm shooting a little bit but you know what we are going to hit this tree and things go wrong we have lost a life now imagine you are 20 minutes into a game however long it is and things have gone absolutely perfectly but you wreck them well you might want to wind back and do something a little bit different if we go to here to settings and we go to miscellaneous and we go to game rewind you've got to ensure that game rewind is turned on i've got it turned on and my history is 24 seconds so what we can then do is we can go back to the game here we go and we're going to go all the way forward and we are going to hit a tree i'm going to try and hit a tree this is the first level so it's quite hard to do there your boat we have hit a tree if we pause the game let's let the helicopter land and take off if we pause the game see we've got rew0 there we can actually rewind this back a little bit by using uh, the thumbstick that I'm doing here. So the helicopter flies off the screen. We reverse back and we have rewound 11 seconds. We can hit play here and we can just pick up from where we were. So this ZX Touch now has the feature to rewind games. So you can be absolutely perfect if you choose to. And games 
like Freedy Death Chase, will no longer be the challenge that they used to be. During the Load Runner demo, you saw that we could change the background. Well, you can change the background many, many times because each game you can support up to 100 different backgrounds. And this is just a quick demo of them. We are going to start up Jetpack here. There we go. And we're just going to cycle through backgrounds. So there's background one, background two, background three, background four, background five. So you can really change what your games look like. You know, I see a bright future for the ZX Touch in terms of people modifying games, people adding backgrounds. And how does the background work? It deserves a little bit more conversation. Well, these are JPEG files that are in the background saved as baseline. And there's a certain resolution that will detail in the config notes that you, you download in the, in the support notes that come with the firmware. But essentially, essentially, the background color is black. And what this does is it makes the background color transparent there. And with the black transparent background color that you have on a lot of Spectrum games, because they did like to use black as the background, uh, you're then in a position where it will show the JPEG files instead of that with all the other colors overlaid on top. This is a really good feature. This is a really nice feature, but it's not all this system does. We've spoken about backgrounds. We've spoken about customizing your games, e.g. we've demoed that in Load Runner. There's one more thing that you can do here as well if you really want to get nostalgic. So let's pick an old classic game. You know, we'll stop at any one of these. I was going to pick Ant Attack, but it's not suitable for this particular demo. Let's pick Space Raiders. So we're going to start this game here. And there you go. Let's just move our ship to a little safe space here. Let's pretend we want to go back to days of old and we want to go to black and white TVs. You can have a little bit of fun here. If you click on the configuration options here, you go to display and we are going to make sure ULA mode is turned off for this. And we're going to turn color palette on, which it is at the moment. We're going to edit it and we're going to go to grayscale and then we're going to go back. You can now play on an old black and white telly yes it makes things a little bit hard to see for some of the colors you know you can't see the ship too well but no you can play on a black and white telly that you've got here so for some games this will work other games it won't work too well this is all dependent what the coders had designed the original colors for but yes you've got a black and white mode that you can turn on and off here in other features on the zx touch one thing that i'm haven't demoed at the moment because you know what i'm actually not sure what game i can use for the demo but i will tell you about this is multi-load if you were playing a multi-load game that loads through the tape you to load the additional levels um to get you further into the game if you save the game and then you go back out and you come back and play a little bit later it wouldn't work because the tape had been reset um the tape position was not remembered well now this will remember the tape position so multi-load games should work absolutely fine with no impact here um, in any shape or form. So let's do a brief recap on all the great things we have now got in firmware 111 on the ZX Touch. We've got the large keyboard. You've seen that where we played the adventure game and it was absolutely great. You have got the custom title screen. Let's remind ourselves of what that looks like. You can turn that on and see the mighty Clive himself and then it boots into the system. You've got the ability to hide the file browser there so you don't need to see this, which is great. Um, you've got the ability to remove the original games so you only have your games that you have there. You've got the ability to have a full screen game so you can fire up a game and have the sidebars disappear you've got the ability to add names to dashboards like we've done here on the automator uk one um you've got the poke tool that we've seen where in the jet set really we had the numerous pokes that we could do um we've got the zxt g tool so now we can modify files and more importantly we will not be involved in piracy because we can remove the tape files and allow people to add their own files We've got the color palette changes that you've seen in Load Runner. We've got the background image changes that you've seen as well. Obviously the files and everything that you have available within the SD card. You know, we don't have to take that and put in a separate PC. 
that's great. We've got the function key tool. Um, so you can hold this button down here if you remember to change the volume, change the background images if you've got them loaded. There is so much that has been created in this firmware. I want to say thank you to Goran for having trust in me to allow me to do this little video. I really appreciate everything that he allows me to do for this. I do all of this for free. I paid for this with my own money, but I think this is a great system. And I truly believed from the last firmware things couldn't get better. There was not going to be much more that could be added but in closing thoughts this is a phenomenal upgrade that costs no money at all you know the firmware is made freely available for you so everybody involved in the zx touch goran thank you for your trust you know this is a great system that you know i i we're one year on and almost from having this you know we're nearly at crash 2024 i got mine in crash 2023 this has been still the best purchase in terms of retro gaming that i have had since then thank you for your trust Thank you for your support. And if anybody's got any questions that you know I might be able to answer, having played with this, when you finally get your hands on 111 of the firmware, reach out in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. Um, you know, I'm not an official spokesperson or anything like that, but I've had a little bit of playtime on this. So you know, if I can help and answer questions as I've already done on other firmware, it will be my pleasure to do it. All of you stay safe. All of you take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.